Lightroom has just launched some great new updates and I'm excited to show you what's in store. Let's first dive into Quick Actions. This is a brand new feature inside the Lightroom app. Quick Actions allows Lightroom to analyze my image and then suggest edits I can make to improve the shot. This is super exciting and I've been playing around with it loads, getting some great results and saving myself a stack of time. So let me show you exactly how the Quick Actions feature works and we can edit this portrait using it. So once I've got my photo inside of Lightroom for mobile, I'm gonna come down to the bottom left-hand corner and tap on the new actions button. Lightroom might take a second or two to analyze your shot and then it's time to edit. Through quick actions, Lightroom suggests edits that are gonna make my photo better without me having to go and deep dive into each individual tool. So let's first kick things off with our subject. I'm gonna tap on subject and as you can see here, Lightroom is now suggesting a whole load of different edits I can put onto my photo super easily. So let's have a look what pop looks like. This helps my subject stand out a little bit more from the shot and I can even decrease or increase how much of that effect I want on my image. Let's then have a look at what warm pop looks like, which I can't lie, I'm actually quite a big fan of this. I feel like it breathes quite a lot of color and life into my shot and we might even increase this just a little bit. I'm happy with that. Let's now move on to the background. I'm just gonna scroll through and have a look at how these effects are changing my shot. You can definitely see that background is starting to get really blurred out. This one might be a little bit too blurry just for my taste. So I might look at backing that off just a little bit. I'd say that's looking pretty good. And then let's move into the sky because I've got to say the sky is quite white and there's no detail in there whatsoever. It was a really cloudy day, but let's see what Lightroom suggests we should do. Let's first kick things off with blue drama, which has darkened our sky and then made it blue as well. This adds a load of color and contrast into my shot, which once again, I'm a huge fan of. And let's have a look at what dark drama looks like. Maybe this one's a little bit too much. Let's back it off to blue drama and then drop the amount by a little bit as well. I'd say this photo is already starting to shape up. I find that the quick actions panel is a great place for me to start my edits before I move over onto Lightroom desktop. Now we're not done with our quick actions workflow yet. Let's have a look and see what Lightroom suggests that we retouch. So we're gonna tap on retouch here and then you can see that we can make changes to the teeth, the eyes, the skin, the hair, and even the clothing. Let's have a look and see what we can do to our clothing simply by enhancing it or dropping it down. It definitely makes that purple coat stand out a little bit more, which I'm quite a fan of once again. And then let's have a look and see what we can do to our hair. Moving our slider down to the left, we definitely get a little bit more of a faded but saturated look to the hair. And then moving it over to the right, things get way too contrasty for me. So I'm just gonna back this off ever so slightly. And then we can make our way over to the eyes where I'm gonna look at increasing it just a little bit to add some pop and enhance those eyes just a touch. So with all of the changes we just made through the quick actions feature, I'm gonna hit the tick in the bottom right corner and then show you one of my favorite parts about this tool. Because for every adjustment we've just made, Lightroom actually created a mask to make that adjustment and now we can open up our masking tab and have a look at exactly how Lightroom was able to create these changes. You can see that there are a load of masks here inside of our masking tab that Lightroom was creating while we were using the Quick Actions tool. Now this is very, very handy because I can now come in here and fine tune things a little bit more if I wanted to and make sure my edits are absolutely on point. Maybe I pushed or pulled a slider too far inside of the quick actions. Well, I can come here and fine tune that mask, which is extremely helpful. I also wanna mention here that quick actions is perfect for anyone just getting started inside of Lightroom and maybe a little bit unsure of what changes can or could be made to their shot. Now, quick actions is perfect for editing any type of photo. We've just had a look at how it works when you're editing a portrait image, but how does it work when you're editing a landscape shot? Well, we've got our landscape shot booted up here inside of Lightroom for mobile. And I'm gonna navigate over to our quick actions tab in the bottom left corner, and we get a totally different set of edits we can make to this shot because Lightroom has analyzed our shot and realized that there are no people in this shot and no hair in this shot and no clothing in this shot that it needs to edit. So I'm gonna use quick actions here to show you how I've been making a base edit on my shot before I go in and add all my colors and looks later on. I find that this is the perfect workflow for me and this is where quick action shines for even someone that's got a lot of Lightroom experience under their belt. So let's have a look and see what we can do to this image. I'm first gonna tap on sky. We're gonna let Lightroom do its thing and then we're gonna cycle through some of the changes. Instantly, blue drama without any adjustments, 
looks great. It's brought down the exposure of the sky and then also added some nice blue color in there. So now it looks like a really beautiful day. And let's just scroll across. Maybe this one's a little bit too dramatic for my liking. Blue Pop looks great, but it's probably not as good as Blue Drama. And you can see that we've got so many options to choose from here. So let's have a look at Storm Clouds, which has made our sky a little bit more dramatic and moody. But I'm gonna go back with Blue Drama and then let's see how much of this we should be adding to our shot. See, if I crank it all the way up here, it's probably a little bit too over dramatic, but it might work for your photo. And if I back it off here, it's probably not doing enough. So, so what I'm gonna do here is just see how much we should or shouldn't be adding to this image. I would say it's pretty much nailed it first go at 100 here, but I might add just a little bit more I like the look of that. I think it's looking good. And since the sky is the only thing that I can adjust inside of quick actions for this landscape shot, I'm also gonna tap on auto and this is just gonna help bring my image to life. And now with my quick actions workflow out of the way, I might head over to our color tab right here and then look at increasing those oranges and reds in this image because this is really helping it stand out. And then I might also come in here to the yellows, drop those a touch to help those oranges and reds really surface. And I would say this image is more or less done. I do wanna mention that Quick Actions is a great feature for everyone to use, even if you've got a load of experience inside of Lightroom already. I find that it can help you edit far quicker and easier by surfacing tools from the beginning that are really gonna help you make your shot better. Now let's dive into one of my favorite new features inside of Lightroom, the Generative Remove tool. This feature uses Adobe Firefly's generative AI technology to remove large objects and distractions from your shot. This has been a game changer since its early release in May, and it's now available across all Lightroom surfaces. It also works on raw and non-raw images, and the best part is it's completely non-destructive, so you can revert any changes you like at any time. So let's see it in action on this photo right here. I'm gonna make my way over to the remove tool. And by the way, you now no longer have to toggle on generative AI remove. It's done automatically for you. Now, I absolutely love this shot, but there are probably a few too many people in this image that are muddying up the waters, if you will. So let's zoom in and remove some of these people. I'm gonna make my brush size just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna come over to this lady here and just paint her out and I'm gonna click remove. Now I'm gonna let Lightroom work its magic. And just like that, she's gone. How good does this look? For us photographers, this tool is a massive time saver and often works far better than any other traditional healing tools. The real beauty of these AI features like generative remove and quick actions is how they streamline our editing process. They take care of all the tedious editing steps and allow us to focus on the fun, creative aspects of photography. Oh, and by the way, I've also found that it's better to use generative remove before you use quick actions, as it's kind of like creating a clean slate before you go in and do all your fine tuning. All right, now I'm gonna show you what's new for advanced workflows in Lightroom Desktop. One of the coolest new features in Lightroom Desktop is Smart Albums. This is a game changer for organizing your photos. If you're familiar with Smart Collections in Lightroom Classic, you're gonna be really happy about this tool. Smart Albums takes that tedious task of organizing our photos manually off our hands. It's like having a personal assistant that organizes our photos for us exactly how we would want them automatically. So let me show you how it works. Okay, so let's say for example, I wanted to create an album with all the photos I have that have palm trees in them. If I wanted to do this manually, it might take me a day or two, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it in seconds just using smart albums. So if we come to the top here and search all photos for palm trees, and by the way, you can search location, you can search people, you can search pretty much everything. The search functionality is really powerful. So now Lightroom has gone through and found all the photos that have palm trees in them. I'm gonna to navigate to this view here and in the top right hand corner, you can see create smart album. Now I'm gonna click that and now I can do palm trees. You can name this as you wish, but you can also edit filters. And this is where my mind gets blown. So if we hit edit filters, it's gonna open up this window here and I can then add a rule and you can pretty much dial this in as much as you want. All the way down to what f-stops should be included in this smart album, this is mind blowing. But for today, I just want palm trees in my smart album. So I'm gonna hit click create there. And then as you can see on the bottom left-hand corner, it just gets added in with any of my normal albums. But this isn't just any normal album. This is a smart album. And that means that any photo in the future that I import with a palm tree in it will get added into this smart album. Crazy. The smart album that I just created is going to dynamically update this folder with any image 
that meets the criteria that I've set. And for photographers with large photo libraries or multiple projects, this capability adds in organization and sorting without as much manual file management. Let's move into another feature that is gonna make your workflow so much smoother. This is a game changer for those of us who like to use multiple tools in our editing process. We've always been able to connect Photoshop to our Lightroom editing workflow by right-clicking on a photo and then hit edit in Photoshop. But Lightroom has just allowed us to do that with any other editing platform. Let me show you how it's done. So here we are inside of Lightroom Desktop. I'm gonna right click on this photo here, select edit in and then click on browse. This will now allow Lightroom to connect to any other editing platform that I want to use, streamlining my workflow. Photos can also be brought back into Lightroom after editing is complete to live in your Lightroom library. All right, we've covered some amazing new features so far and this last one is no exception. This new feature, part of Adobe's content authenticity initiative is all about giving us photographers more control over our work. And it's a fitting finale to wrap up our tour of Lightroom's latest updates as it addresses one of the most pressing concerns in our field today. Content Credentials allows you to attach your name, your social media handle, and even a list of edits to your shot via a digital signature. It's like giving your image its own digital ID card, so let me show you how it works. To kick things off, let's set up Content Credentials. I'm inside of Lightroom for Desktop here, and I'm gonna make my way over to Preferences. Once this opens up, I'm gonna make my way over to Export, and here is where I can choose what I want to be included on the content credentials and what I don't want to be included on my content credentials. If you haven't already, I'd highly recommend to connect your social media accounts to your content credentials, and you can do so here by clicking this Manage button. And I'm gonna select all three, the producer, my name, Zach Watson, my connected Instagram account, which is mine, and then my edits and activities on my shot. And then of course, I wanna hit apply content credentials and then hit done. From here, I'm gonna select an image and export it. I'm gonna use this shot here from our smart folder we created earlier. So I'm gonna hit shift and E to export. And then as you can see over here on the right hand side, I'm gonna hit apply content credentials and then it's ready for export. Now the content credentials tool is currently available in early access across the entire Lightroom ecosystem. This tool is for users who want to check if content is authentic and they can do so by going to contentcredentials.org and uploading the image. The CR icon verifies that this image has content credentials present and tapping on the image shows you a summary of credits, usage, and the process taken to create it. For photographers who are concerned about AI transparency or their images being improperly used, appending to content credentials allows your digital nutrition label to be stamped into the metadata of your image. For disciplines where photographic honesty is important, content credentials can really lend a hand pointing to the rightful owner and the legitimacy and authenticity of an image. All right, that is wrapping up all the brand new features inside of Lightroom. I love how all of these tools are really enabling us as photographers to do our best work. So head over to Lightroom, go and check out all these new features and have fun editing.